Hi, this is Gary with MacMost.com. Today let me show you 10 things that you may not know that you can do in Mac Pages. MacMost is brought to you thanks to a great group of more than 800 supporters. Go to MacMost.com slash Patreon. There you could read more about the Patreon campaign, join us, and get exclusive content and course discounts. So Pages is the word processor that most Mac users use. However, not everybody knows all the different things that it can do. Let me start off with a simple one. You can get the word count of your document by simply going to View and then Show Word Count or at Shift Command W. This brings up the word count at the bottom of the screen. It tells you the word count of the entire document but if you select some text it will tell you the word count of just that selection. And if you click here you can see the character count with or without spaces, words, paragraphs, or pages. And you can switch to one of those to be the default. Now here's something to make your documents look prettier. You can use drop caps. What are drop caps? Well I'll show you. Select a paragraph or just the beginning of a paragraph and then go to Format and Style and all the way at the bottom is Drop Cap. Turn that on and you'll see here it takes the first letter and makes that larger and covers several lines. You can change the number of lines, the number of characters, you can choose from one of the preset styles like this one or you can choose your own options. And outside of the Drop Cap interface there you can also just select that one letter and then change it to use a different font. Now when you want to make text really stand out like the title here you can of course make it bold and you can change its color. But did you also know that you could use an image for the fill for the letters. Under Format, Style, under Text Color select Image Fill or Advanced Image Fill. When you do that it's going to use the default little pattern here. But you can drag and drop an image from the Finder right into this box and then it will use that image as the fill for the text. Now I'm sure you know that you could add images to your documents. But you could also add something called an Image Gallery. To do that go to Insert and use Image Gallery here. And we'll put this element in. Let's resize it just like we would a normal image. And now we can drag multiple images here. So I'm going to select four images from the Finder and drag them in. And you'll see four dots here and you can click on them to see each one. Also notice on the right under Format, Gallery we now have lots of options like here are the images. We can rearrange them. We can add new ones, remove these, and we can choose whether the caption should be for the entire image gallery or have a different caption for each image. Now image galleries are neat but only if you distribute your Pages document as a Pages document to somebody else. If you save it out as a PDF well it's not available as a function inside of PDF readers so you're not going to be able to use the image gallery. So if you're building something with image galleries in it your choices pretty much are to distribute it as a Pages document to somebody else or perhaps you're using it because you're using Pages to build something that will then be uploaded to Apple Books. Another type of unusual media that you could add is a web video. So you can go to Insert and Web Video and it will ask you for a URL for something like a YouTube video or from Vimeo. So here's one of my Mac Most videos. If I go to Share it gives me a link. I could copy that link and then if I paste it in here you could see it appear with the title and everything. I could use Insert here and now I've got this element that is a YouTube video and I could even play it inside of the Pages document. And just like Image Gallery you really need to distribute as a Pages document. This isn't going to work in a PDF or obviously when you print. Now it may seem obvious that when you create a document it looks like this. But you could also use columns to distribute the text among columns. So I could put my cursor here inside the body text. Go to Format and then Layout. And then set the number of columns. I'll increase it to 2. And you can see it flows the text in 2 columns. But you don't have to do it for the entire document. I'm going to select here at the beginning of the text, go to the end of the document and select that. So everything except the title and subtitle here. And then when I change the number of columns you can see the title and subtitle remain as one column but the rest go to two columns. One of the most useful functions in editing that people don't know about is the ability to revert to previous versions of the document. Every time you save your document it's actually remembering what the document looks like at that point. So the more that you use File, Save, or Command S the better. Then you can go to File, Revert To and Browse All Versions and you'll go into a Time Machine like interface and here you'll see all your previous versions. So you can flip through your previous versions 
And here you can see for instance I saved when I was showing you the column view here. So if I wanted to I could restore and revert to this version of it. Another thing you do is you can actually click in here and then select text. So if you've deleted text and you have it in a previous version you can select the text then Command C to copy and then just use Done to get out of that interface and then you could paste that text in. You can also encrypt your document with a password. So you just need to go to File and then Set Password. And then you ask to set a password, verify, add a hint if you like. The checkbox for remember this password in my keychain means that while you're working with this document on your Mac you won't even notice that it's password protected. It will automatically open it up. But once you set a password this doesn't simply lock the document. This encrypts it. So unless you have that password there's no way to get to the contents of that document. So make sure you remember the password, save it somewhere, or put it in your keychain. But then you can send this document to somebody else and if they know the password they'll be able to get it securely and only they can open it. Another thing you can do is collaborate with somebody. Not just passing the document back and forth but in real time. If you click the Collaborate button here you can choose who can access so only people you invite and what permission they have whether it's view only or they can make changes. If you set it up so they can make changes then you could share it with them. Let's use the Messages app to send them the link although you could copy the link or send it to them an email message as well. And then I'm going to click Share. Then I'm going to type the Apple ID of the person I want to share it with and send this. Once they join you'll see the number of people collaborating with you here at the top and you'll be able to type but also they will be able to type. And then you'll see the changes there. You even see a little color. So as this person types here you'll see it update in real time. And they'll see your updates in real time as well. This is great for collaborative note taking but do note that the Pages document needs to be saved to iCloud for this to work. Now when you go to set the page size for a Pages document if you go to the Document sidebar here you only see a limited number of options. It looks like that's all you can choose. But you can set any page size you want by going to File and then Page Setup. And here you'll see the same two things. The Format for and Paper Size. But now Paper Size has Manage Custom Sizes and you could add a new size. So you can create kind of a custom size for pages, give it a name, and now you'll see this appear here in the list at the bottom. And you notice the pages in your document now fit that size. And here's one bonus tip. You can set the background color for your entire document really easily. Just go to Document and then Section. And the first item here is Background and it's usually set to be transparent. But if you open this up here you can change it to a color, a gradient, even an image for the background. Let's just set it to a simple color. You see how I can choose the color here. And now the entire document uses that as the background color. Note though that it is for the section. So if your document has multiple sections you can set a different background color for each section. This of course isn't that great for printing but if you plan to distribute your document as a PDF you could color the background and even add a kind of subtle shade or gradient to make it more interesting. So I hope you learned something new about Pages. Thanks for watching. I publish new tutorials every weekday. Hit the Subscribe button so you don't miss out. Then hit the little bell icon to get notifications for each new tutorial.